Dear artists, you are receiving this email because you were not selected as a finalist. The process was highly Dear artists, and our jurors unfortunately, not we did not select your submission for this exhibition. Dear artists, thank you for submitting your application to our residency. We regret to We received hundreds of excellent submissions from artists and are genuinely blown away by the response. Dear artists, unfortunately, we were not able to include your work in this show. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that I think is super important for all artists and that is rejection. So I've been making art for as long as I can remember and I absolutely love it. But when I was younger, I almost let my fear of rejection stop me from making art entirely. And it took me a few years to change my relationship with rejection. And instead of being afraid of it or taking it as a poor reflection upon myself, just seeing it as an important part of my artistic career. Now I've learned to actually embrace rejection. And if you're afraid of rejection, I wanna convince you that if you are getting rejected, that's actually a good sign. But let me start by telling you my story. So I've always loved drawing and painting since I was young. Um, and when I was in high school, I started submitting my work to competitions. I was taking it really seriously and I wanted to prove myself as an artist. And so I thought submitting to competitions and winning those competitions would prove that I was a great artist. And I worked so hard on the pieces preparing for these competitions. I really wanted to prove myself. I wanted to show everyone that I was a great artist. And I had in my head that the only way to do that would be to win first place in these local competitions. But I never seemed to get first place and I took it really hard. I thought if I wasn't winning first place in these competitions, then that must mean that I didn't have a strong future as an artist. In hindsight, it sounds kind of crazy because I was only a teenager. I was just in the very, very beginning, if you could even say I had even started my art career. And to take these early outcomes, these early feelings of rejection, and then try to predict my entire art career based on that just seems ludicrous. But at the time, I really believed it. I thought if I can't win these art competitions now, then maybe art's just not my thing, even though it was something that I really loved and even though it was something that I really wanted to do. So I figured art probably wasn't the career path for me and I ended up putting it aside for something more practical. Um, I went to college and I would still do art occasionally, but I never submitted to competitions and I would only end up doing one or two paintings every year. And each time I painted, I was obsessed with making it perfect. I think I was still sort of scarred from my experience getting rejected from those competitions in my teenage years. I wanted to prove to myself that I could make a masterpiece. Then while I was in college, I learned something that sort of changed my perspective on rejection. I was reading the, an autobiography on Stephen King, and it was talking about how when he published his first short story, he kept submitting it to journal after journal after journal and kept getting rejections. And every time he would get a rejection, he would take the letter that they mailed him and he would stick it against his wall. He had a nail in the wall and he would stick the letter against the nail so that the rejection was just hanging up there on his wall. And he kept doing that again and again and again. He got so many rejection letters that eventually the weight of the paper of all of these letters was so heavy that they fell off the wall. But did Stephen King let this deter him? No, he kept sending out his story to more and more journals until finally one day, one journal accepted it. And of course, now he's a household name and he writes tons of books and is probably one of the most successful authors in the world. Hearing this story really had a big impact on me because I had been thinking that bad artists get rejected and good artists win awards. But this case showed me that actually, it seems like amazing artists could get rejected all the time. They probably get rejected even more than bad artists do because maybe they just apply to more things. They just keep trying. They just keep putting themselves out there. And I started to think maybe being successful is not about not getting rejected. It's about putting yourself out there again and again and again, despite the rejections. I think unsuccessful artists will get rejected once and then quit, but the artists who end up being successful will get rejected and try again and get rejected and try again and keep going until finally they break through. 
once I started thinking about it that way, then I thought of it more as a numbers game. And then I thought, actually, these rejections and getting a lot of rejections, maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe that's actually a sign that I'm moving in the right direction. And I think if an artist as amazing as Stephen King got tons of rejections, then a rejection is nothing to be ashamed about. There are just so many things whenever you apply to a competition or a residency, there are so many factors outside of your control that can cause you to get a rejection, even if your work is really great. And if your work isn't quite up to par and you get rejected, that means that you were applying to something that was a stretch for you. You were trying to go out of your comfort zone. You were trying to get to that next level, which I think is a really worthy pursuit. If you're not getting rejected, you're probably not taking many risks. Maybe you're only applying to things that you know that you can get into or that you know that you can win. But that means that you're probably not growing. I think Stephen King's response to rejection was revolutionary. It completely changed the way that I thought about rejection. He took these rejection letters that I would think would cause so much shame and he pinned them to his wall, almost like trophies. And I bet when he looked at all those letters on the wall, he felt so motivated thinking about how he could prove them wrong. And after hearing his story, I felt a big shift in myself. I realized that if I wanted to be growing, improving, learning, getting out of my comfort zone, then I needed to embrace rejection as part of the process. So I decided I'd start embracing rejection in my own life. I would look for situations that I felt were uncomfortable or outside of my comfort zone, where I wasn't certain what the outcome was gonna be, and just try it, even if it meant I could get rejected. Things like posting my artwork to social media for the first time, or applying to a really tough competition, or trying to get into a residency that seemed really difficult, or even just asking my local cafe if I could have an art show there. All these things, I just started putting myself out there, not caring whether or not I got rejected. I started putting myself out there, and I accepted the fact that rejection could be an outcome. And now I realize the more rejections I get, the easier it is each time. I think the first competition I got rejected from felt pretty hard. I took it kind of personally, but the more rejections I've gotten, the easier it is to see as, okay, this is just part of the process. This is how things go. And sure, it still hurts sometimes, but in the end, I have this broader perspective that helps me bounce back from the rejections when they come. And I even made my own Stephen King wall. Here are all my rejections from 2022. Uh, you can see there's quite a few. Every time I get one, either in an email or in a letter, I print it out and I put it up on my wall. And when I look at them, I don't see a bunch of failures. Instead, I see a bunch of times where I put myself out there and I tried something new. I see them as signs of me overcoming my fear, which I'm really proud of. Because ultimately, I don't have any control over whether or not my piece is accepted or I get the residency. I just can't control those things. There are so many factors that are outside of my hands. The only thing that I can control is that I advocate for my art and I put myself out there. I can control my own effort and the risks that I take. And if you take risks, then sometimes you're going to get rejected and that's okay. So yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts on this with you because I know that a lot of people struggle with a fear of rejection. And if you're struggling with this, then I hope that some of the things that I shared today could help you overcome your fear of rejection too. And I hope that the next time you get rejected, you don't take it personally because it's just part of the process and it probably means that you're growing and taking risks. And that's something to be proud of. Thanks for watching. If you have any tips on how you like to deal with rejection, I would love to hear them in the comments. And a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you like my art, if you like my videos, and you want to help me make more, then consider joining my Patreon at the link below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.